Hello and welcome back to USAGT. In this video we will be covering the allegations against Olympic alternate and coach Anna Lee and her mother Gianni Wu at their gym Legacy Elite. A little background on Anna Lee. She attended UCLA and after she finished her college career she decided to make a comeback to Elite to try and make it to the 2012 Olympics as a bar specialist. She trained with her parents at their gym, Legacy Elite, home to many notable athletes like Nia Dennis, Gabby Perea, and Faith Torres. She competed at trials with the highest D-score on bars and was named an Olympic alternate after finishing third place. After this, she started coaching at Legacy and was named an athlete's representative on USAG's Athletes Council. As of today, there are over 30 complaints alleging physical, verbal, and emotional abuse, and Anna has since resigned from her position. All of the articles and news sources that I've used to gather this information will be in the description box, and I as always encourage you to read it. It's been alleged that Anna Lee routinely called girls fat and would threaten to make disparaging remarks to college recruiters if they didn't perform well or appeared overweight in Anna's opinion. Allegations of gymnasts having tape placed over their mouths, one incident taking place for two hours. Accusations that girls were forced to practice on injuries, the coaches did not listen to the doctors, and instead steered them towards Larry Nasser, whom Anna Lee herself is a victim of. Just to note, I'm not in any way implying that Anna or her mom knew that he was doing this to their gymnast. I'm just stating information that has been alleged in the complaints. I will say that this doesn't surprise me as many coaches insisted on Nasser because he would clear the girls to keep training and competing when they definitely shouldn't have been. There are also complaints that girls were regularly made to do 10-minute handstands as punishment. One gymnast alleged that she was forced to stand against a wall alone for two hours. That girls were made to sit in an inflatable floaty in the middle of the gym, sometimes for hours. Allegations that coaches inspected what the girls were eating, and when one gymnast, Riley Rembrandt, said that she was having salad for dinner, she was mocked and laughed at and accused of lying. Recent complaints also allege that Anna and Gianni left the gym and the 100 gymnasts under the supervision of two coaches, one speaking little to no English, and that coach had a history of showing up intoxicated, and there was an incident where one of them slapped a seven-year-old gymnast. And here is where we should talk about parental culpability in sports abuse cases. Riley Rembrandt, one of the gymnasts who came forward with her allegations, alleges that in 2015, Gianni pushed her while she was in a handstand position on beam, and she collided with the beam, and it resulted in a bloody gash that left a scar for months. Here is the photo provided in the article showing Riley with a scar. In a meeting with Gianni and Anna after the incident, she states that they said, well, this is just physical coaching, and this is the way that we do things here, and and this is just how we are. That was in 2015, and Riley continued at Legacy Elite until 2019. So she's stating that her parents continued to bring her to a gym where she was physically assaulted and scarred for four more years after the incident took place. Another parent, Carmen Scanlon, who also went on record with the Orange County Register, had said that she witnessed Gianni, quote, yank her daughter off high beam, pull her to the ground, grab her by the arm, drug her to the mats, and then sat on her daughter's back. She stated she was there, she saw it, and she said she was stupid for not doing anything and leaving a month later. So in these situations, these parents have, at least one, has witnessed their child being physically assaulted by an adult. None apparently intervened to protect their child. None removed their children immediately from the gym as they should have. In both of these cases, not to my knowledge, did any of them go to the police or file a police report or press charges? They did nothing. And they continued to bring their child to women who at least one parent knows assaulted their child. And I feel there is not enough discussion 
about it. It can be a touchy subject because parents also face the prospect of having their child's uh, elite career, what they've been working for for 10 plus years, essentially ruined because a coach could blacklist them from going to any other gym, call college recruiters and have their scholarships revoked. And these are unfortunate situations. But at what point do you put your child first? How much longer can gymnastics be put first instead of their child's safety and health and well-being? And I think these are prime examples of parents putting Olympic dreams ahead of their child's life. These complaints have been made since 2019, and neither Gianni nor Anna have been placed on suspension. And this is also interesting to me because Victoria Levine, the assistant coach to Maggie Haney, she was placed on interim suspension, as she should have, but to my knowledge, none of the allegations against her involves physical assault like it does in these cases. So what warrants a suspension? if not in these allegations. Some of the complainants have complained of the length of time that this has taken. It's been almost two years. And Safe Sport claims it's the magnitude of the participants as there have been over 100 participants contacted for this investigation. Anna Lee and her mother Gianni's interviews with Safe Sport are supposed to happen within 30 days, and Anna Lee calls these allegations absolutely false and untrue. So let us know your thoughts on the matter in the comment section, and we will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, bye!